Hey everybody, Kovac here with another Halo 5 action figure review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Series 1 Spartan Jameson Lock from the McFarlane toy line. Just a quick look here at the packaging. Very neat figure, battle rifle pistol, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Alright guys, now that we got Lock out of the packaging, we can take a good look at the figure here, which I would say... Uh, he is painted very, very well. Uh, the sculpting on this figure is fantastic. I mean, the level of detail that McFarlane does on most of their figures is really, really good in the past. Um, but with Halo 5, I feel like they've done even better. Uh, as far as, you know, the armor, you've got uh, all the little tiny, tiny, tiny detail work. Zoom in a little bit here. And just, you can see all sorts of painting that they've done differently um, in the past they had figures like Halo Reach figures they were really nice they, they were a step up of Halo 3 and they you know they were kind of dirty looking and, and that was kind of how the game was and in Halo 5 everything's a lot cleaner and I mean there's a little bit of a flub there you got the blue outside of the the tube but I mean the helmet everything looks paint job fantastic um, Weapons that he comes with, uh, pistol, human pistol, and the battle rifle. Uh, pistol you can just take off of the uh, hip, and you got the little peg sticking out, but you can take the peg out as well. Um, zoom out here. We've got the three different peg holes for the weapons. You got one on each thigh, and then one on the back. Surprisingly to me, there was no spot on here for grenades. Normally on the like every other. McFarlane figured there was either pegs sticking out or a place for pegs to go for grenades, but I guess for Halo 5 there are no grenade attachments whatsoever, which seems kind of strange to me because it seems kind of like a step backward. Like, why wouldn't they do that? Uh, articulation. Take the battle rifle out of his hands. Uh, I'd like to make one side note. This battle rifle looks fantastic. I mean, the detail work in here and the paint job is very awesome. In the past, a lot of the guns that McFarlane did were very plain, very blah. Um, I don't know if that was just because of cost, if it was just mainly because of how the game was, but I know that every version of Halo that's coming out is getting more and more and more and more detailed, and McFarlane has done a fantastic job of kind of keeping up with that and making it look really, really nice. Uh, but as far as the weapons go, I've noticed that with Locke, he doesn't have the best articulation, which does limit his poses, potentially, that he could do. Um, trying to get the battle rifle into his hands, um, it fit fine for getting into his shooting hand, his right hand. Uh, he does not have a trigger finger in order to kind of loop into the battle rifle's trigger, but uh, the left hand, trying to get him to hold the battle rifle, and support it was very difficult at first and I felt like I really had to force it into his hands and I don't really want to do that because McFarlane's weapons while the figures are built out of kind of a pretty good plastic that's pretty pliable the weapons are always very stiff and very rigid and they're not super super strong so you got to be careful that you don't want to end up breaking one of your accessories because, I mean, yeah, you get two guns with Locke and two guns with all the rest of the Halo 5 Spartans, but I don't know about you, I don't really like having to replace a weapon just because the figure broke it on its own. Anyway, articulation here, head, is pretty good range of motion. Up, down, um, arms here are on a nice, I guess I'd call it a cog joint. You can feel it kind of clicking as it goes so that way it's like really firm in there twist all the way around at the elbow the same kind of joint can rotate you know you get a pretty good range of motion out of there the wrist rotate um, the shoulders though would be where the problem is with holding the gun because if you try to straighten his arms out so like you know you and I can put our arms down and completely touch our hips <laughs> He kind of can't without a lot of force there. So one downside, though, of McFarlane figures is that normally they look fantastic. McFarlane's people are amazing at sculpting and designing these figures to be very, very extremely close to how they are in-game. But they don't always offer a great deal of articulation, which is fine if I want to just leave this figure up on a shelf. 
and get it in whatever kind of cool pose I could possibly get them in. But there's so many other figure lines out there that have uh, that still try to retain as close to the original design as possible, but still also allow you to have a pretty good range of motion that it's kind of a bummer that when you get to McFarlane stuff and they're like one of the only American designers that have that awesome of figures that they kind of sacrifice posing for detail and I mean he looks great like this but if I wanted to put him in some kind of action pose it'd be I'm very limited uh, in the waist here doesn't have a huge range of motion but can twist 360 the legs if you don't have any Halo 5 figures yet, the legs are not as good as they used to be, the hips. If you notice, in the past the hips kind of were a little bit more out. And it gave you a little bit more freedom to extend the legs. This is as far as the legs are going to go. And then if I try to move it forward, there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Unless I rotate the leg, and then rotate the knee, and then it looks like he's trying to, I don't know, do something uh, it's not appropriate for children to watch so I don't really I don't really like that because that doesn't really add to putting him into any sort of action pose <laughs> whatsoever the knee joint that's as far back as it's gonna go right there forward back that's it the ankle uh, can rotate 360 degrees can go up and down or if you turn it the other way you can also rotate it sideways and then you also have a toe articulation the almighty toe tradiculation. Tradic, tradic. Ugh, okay. Alright, so to wrap up this review, got him in a kind of an action pose. Uh, pros of the figure, detail work is awesome. Paint job is really, really nice. Um, weapon choice, pretty good. Standard weapons, but I still like them. Uh, for cons, his hips really, really restrict him. I mean, that. I tried to get him in some kind of action pose. I know if I really, really sat there and kept fumbling around with it, I could figure out one a little bit cooler. But, and it's not, not that great. And his arms are borderline not useful at all. So just be aware of that. For collectors, I'd say pick him up because he's, you know, the main antagonist of the storyline. So you've got, you can get him and Master Chief and it's pretty cool. It's kind of like getting him and Arbor, like if you were in the Halo 2 or Halo 3. So, you know, kind of that. Uh, for animations, I'd pass. He's definitely not that good. Um, he's got limits, and if you have to make a choice between two different characters, I'd skip on him. Uh, modifications needed. It'd be nice if you kind of give him a trigger finger, which isn't too hard to do, but, you know, it's not super, super necessary. So, uh, my rating, I would say that he's <sighs> three out of five. Not the best, definitely not the worst, but, you know... Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, commenting, subscribing, and I appreciate any support you guys give, whether it's just watching, hitting like, or supporting me through Patreon. I, I really do appreciate it. It helps these reviews to continue, and for the animations as well. So anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think. Was my rating a little harsh, or do you think maybe it's kind of fair? Because <laughs> the Halo 5 figures, while they look great, are really, really restrictive for uh, articulation. Anyway, guys, appreciate it. Talk to you guys later.